ShireSociety.com. You guys are the criminals. Do you understand that? He did nothing. There is no crime. No victim. No crime. Okay, so folks did watch in good numbers the vid in which Sun Tzu predicts the Free State Project's chances. If you didn't see it, summary. He has seven factors which he says allow him to determine which side will win, will win a conflict. I applied them to our struggle in New Hampshire. And between the two of us, I'd say Sun Tzu and I are giving the Free Staters two to one chances of winning. By winning, I mean achieving Jason Soren's originally stated dream. Two-thirds less government over Free Staters' heads than they had to deal with in 01. Click the link in the video description to watch that analysis. But, Sun Tzu has a lot of other ideas and suggestions that apply to the... If I touch you, are you going to grab me? Are you? Peaceable battle for liberty in New Hampshire. I'm going to go in order. The first Sun Tzu directive that seems to apply well to us is The Art of War, Chapter 1, Stick 20. Quote, Hold out baits to entice the enemy. Feign disorder and crush him. Unquote. I don't know if feigning disorder or crushing should apply to our type of deterrence-oriented nonviolent conflict. But holding out baits to the enemy to, to entice him does. The way we do this is the Mike Fisher way. You commit a pre-announced act of popular defiance aimed at triggering an unpopular, well-publicized government attack. Fisher enticed the authorities by announcing he'd buff a friend's nails without getting a license. He precisely followed the Rosa Parks Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Mahatma Gandhi formula, and authorities completely swallowed the hook arresting him and granting him possibly the most successful publicity stunt in the state since the turn of the century. Every major media outlet in the state that I know of reported on it. But it's somewhat rare that Liberty folk do this. I can only name about 15 cases. About nine of those were mine. Mine were each far less successful than Mike's, but they each required a lot less effort. As it was only the ninth one that got me arrested. I promised I'd keep doing the events until arrested, and it took nine tries. But anyway, th there's some, uh, usually some element missing uh, when there's civil disobedience in New Hampshire. I see five million words worth of New Hampshire state law. It needs to be taken off the books. Team Main Street. <laughs> we have uh, two young ladies. Either the resistor fails to set a date and time with plenty of notice. She fails to invite the mainstream press. She fails to write the authorities beforehand, or she fails to plan the disobedience carefully in advance, like Rosa Parks did. If you let yourself down on any of these cylinders, I'm not sure it can be called holding out a bait, because your hook is not entirely in place. The hook of the supportive crowd, the hook of the mainstream press coverage, the activist videographers and public backlash against authorities. It's more like throwing a worm in the water. Anyway, I see this type of activism as endorsed by Sun Tzu and, of course, all our civil disobedience heroes of old. And yet, we have pretty much stopped doing it. All the civil dis seems to be spontaneous now. I think ideally there should be a mix and that we should or that we need the Mike Fisher style resistance again. Anyway, this next uh, stick in chapter one is also relevant, stick number 21. Referring to the opponent, Sun Tzu says, quote, If he is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is superior in strength, evade him. Unquote. I've always thought about the World War I application of this advice. The Germans were secure at all points on the Western Front after 1914. So the appropriate Allied reaction would have been to simply be ready for them with good defensive works. An act of defense, a mobile reaction force behind the lines, decisive offensive would be limited to other or decisive offensives would be limited to other theaters. 
There were feeble attempts in this direction, but mainly the Allies just attacked those prepared positions in France. I believe about half of them who were ever part of it died. Anyway, this is partially applicable to us, or would be if our tormentors were secure at all points. By that I mean, say we were in a situation where civil disobedience was obviously not working where our legislative efforts were not working, where we were failing to get much publicity for our proactive efforts, or where crackdowns are envisioned. It might be appropriate, then, to create more of a reactive force. For example, a constantly staffed, carefully provisioned activist RV, or fleet of such. <laughs> Maybe one based in Peterborough and another in Concord. When, say, an NH activist is arrested, perhaps the RV closest to her drives toward the jail where she's expected to end up that day. It's ready with humanitarian aid, early demonstrators, sign-making gear, and nearly every type of communication device you can imagine. It uses these all to full effect. Or maybe it responds to last-minute legislative shenanigans or breaking news. That's what I call an active defense. Right now, a setup like this is apparently beyond our will or means. And of course, proactive stuff is sucking a lot of air out of the room. But I bet an individual or two could do something comparable to this, even with just their car and resources they already own. A mobile rapid reaction force. Or person. In fact, I'm thinking I might try this briefly in mid-2013, maybe. Though it would tend to be more about taping things than holding signs. Hard to do both at once. I find I have to focus on more what I can do by myself. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at shiresociety.com.